Information updated the headlines. The governor of the North West region, Adolf Lili Lafrique, has a warrant against a possible outbreak of a second wave of the coronavirus pandemic as the region has recorded over 116 cases with five related deaths in the past 10 days. It was a bloody weekend for the traditional family of the southwest region, specifically the Esoata village, as they lost three funds to the co-hands of death, who are suspected to have been murdered by separatist fighters in the region, with fingers have been pointed at the gang leader called a field marshal. Zimbabwe has received its first batch of 200,000 doses of the Sinopharm donated by the Chinese government in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all for the headlines. Stay tuned as we bring these stories and more. Good evening once more. The population of the Northwest region has been called upon to be vigilant and respect the barrier measures against the COVID-19 pandemic as a possible outbreak of a second wave is evident. In a release dated February 12, 2021, the governor of the Northwest region, Adolf Lele Lafrique, stated that the region has recorded 116 cases with five deaths in the past 10 days. More in this report. Since the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic in Cameroon in March of 2020, the Northwest region was one of the last regions to be affected by the virus. With the first case recorded, which came in from the Wala littoral region, measures were put in place to stop the spread of the virus, especially at the entrance of the region. Everyone entering the region must wear a face mask and a temperature check was also obligatory for all entries. However, as time went on, the idea of COVID-19 became a mystery, even though the dead rate kept rising. As of date, many persons do not respect these barrier measures. Even the authorities have relaxed their efforts as no temperature check is being carried out at Matazum, entrance to the region, no hand wash points and most entrants do not even possess a face mask, togless of wearing one. This is not only in the Northwest region and its environ, the same case is witnessed around other regions of the country. According to head of the region, Governor Adolf Lele Lafrique, the cumulative statistics for the COVID-19 pandemic in the region carries 1,289 positive cases with 935 recoveries and 173 active cases on treatment and unfortunately 81 deaths with 40 occurring in health facilities and 41 in the communities. The Mezam, Boyo, Donga, Mantung and Gokutunja division are the most affected communities in the region, even though the city of Bamenda still remains the epicenter of the pandemic. With this resurgence, the governor has stated his plans of a mass testing campaign in all health facilities, schools and communities scheduled for the next three months while calling on the population to respect the set barrier measures in order to prevent a further spread. Even though most persons are complaining of a laxity in the part of the authorities and the delay has in the mass testing campaign, the virus keeps spreading if nothing is done. It was a bloody weekend for the traditional family of the southwest region, specifically the Esoeta village, as they lost three funds to the cold hands of a death on the same day. After four traditional rulers, uh, that uh, Chief Fuamin Keng, Chief Fians Ale, Chief uh, Fuawen Suo, and uh, Chief uh, Fuajijong were kidnapped uh, from their homes, and later the corpses of three were found. Uh, in the Betwa River, suspected to have, of course, been kidnapped and killed by secessionist fighters operating in the region. Our traditional authorities, now the target of the ongoing conflict in the region, attempted response in this report. The four-year prolonged crisis has not only saw the murder of traditional authorities but students, youth, teachers and basically persons in every category. Traditional authorities seem to be the main target recently as their kidnap and subsequent release for the few lucky ones, a murder of the unfortunate ones, is becoming rampant. Over the weekend, it was the case of the chiefs of Esoata village in the southwest region who were taken from their homes by a notorious gang leader called Field Marsha and three corpses of the four chiefs were later found in the Betwa River according to inhabitants. 
The whereabouts of Chief Fiant Ale still remains unknown. On Sunday, February 14, the paramount ruler of Com, Fonzi Clement II, was kidnapped in the restive northwest region while he was headed back from church and released shortly after, while his traditional servants still remain in captivity. These are not the only funds who have been minimized to nothing during the armed conflict, as Fon Sem Binglo II of the Seoul land was also kidnapped and released only after three days earlier in November of 2020. On November 6th of 2020, the traditional ruler of Liula Malele, His Majesty Mulinga Francis Nango, was murdered by unidentified gunmen at his palace and his palace burned down to ashes. Noted to be the second traditional ruler killed with the wake of the crisis in the English-speaking regions, the first being Chief Banda J. Williams of Lisoka Muliwe village, these deceived chiefs and others have become the price to the ongoing conflict as many have questioned the role of traditional authorities in politics. Meanwhile, a traditional ruler symbolizes peace and unity. They have been reduced to ridicule elements in the northwest and southwest regions as they are scared of fully exercising their functions for what awaits them. The question is, will killing these traditional authorities grant the southern part of Cameroon the independence they seek for? The conflict, according to many, has become a ground for settling individual scores. Traditional authorities, just like students, teachers, and uniformed men should have the right to exercise their duties and demand the respect of these basic rights. On to stealing Cameroon of false job recruitment and are becoming a daily routine in Cameroon. Despite, of course, the caution being given to job seekers daily, many still fall in the hands of these scammers. But, of course, are the institutions whose images are being tarnished to be blamed or the victims listen to this report? The circulation of forced recruitment adverts is not new in Cameroon, but rather gaining momentum. With a percentage ranging between 3.8% and 4%, young people aged 15 to 35 are unemployed. And nearly 70% of the population would find themselves in underemployment with wages below the guarantee minimum interprofessional wage of 36,500 francs CFA, according to figures provided in 2016 by the National Institute of Statistics. A situation which pushes these false structures to create false recruitment with enormous salaries. With the advent of social media increasingly used in the country without much user attention, scammers are finding a flourishing breeding ground. The difference is that the contacts are done virtually and then they demand for money after a few exchanges. Why serious recruiters usually invite job seekers somewhere, especially in an office, these fake imposters never let you meet them. The development of electronic payment methods has also made it easier for them. The preferred services are Orange Money and MTN Mobile Money, and others also feel free to request payment for services through an Express Union Money Order or any other money transfer office. The custom does not hesitate, however, because he is in confidence. In addition, WhatsApp groups are indeed created and integrated with these alleged victims. These groups allow the distribution of bogus contacts to applicants. One of the best points is the very large number of positions offered in a recruitment advertisement, sometimes reaching 300 to 400 offers. The most insensitive is the staggering salary. For a secretary position, for example, bogus recruiters offers 200,000 francs CFA, something extremely rare in the Cameroonian context. So confident and hopeful, job seekers let themselves be taken, and thereafter will never be hired. Hence, the question, is the government fighting a battle to end these scams? We remember that on February 7 of 2018, a vast recruitment was announced within the National Refinery Company. The company had to deny this false recruitment through announcements of recruitment in Camrail and even in the bakeries of Santa Lucia, which turned out to be all fake. Added to these denials, several awareness raising meetings in the face of this mode of fraud or cyber crime are organized in Cameroon. This in order to awaken the population while the Minister of Civil Service and Administrative Reform always informs the public to be more vigilant about the announcement of the web. It should be remembered that this phenomena is not limited only to recruitment announcement but goes further in communicates, decrease and others. Just to note, caution must be taken on all social networks. Zimbabwe has received its first batch of 200,000 doses of the Sinopharm donated by the Chinese government in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic. 
The vaccine was of course received on a Monday that earlier today at the Robert Gabriel Mugabe International Airport in the capital city of Harare. The Chinese government and the coronavirus vaccine was donated by the East Asian nations government while another batch of 600,000 doses purchased by Zimbabwe is expected to arrive early next month. This shipment from China comes after prior vaccine doses, deliveries to Egypt and of course the Equatorial Guinea. Vaccination priority will also be given to frontline workers such as healthcare professionals and of course immigration agents working at the borders according to the rollout plan in Zimbabwe which has of course as of Sunday reported 35,104 COVID-19 cases and almost 1,398 deaths. Many more doses beyond this first batch of 200,000 will be necessary to achieve herd immunity in Zimbabwe as 60% of its population equivalent to 10 million people will need to be vaccinated. At least three people have uh, died from Ebola in Guinea and five others have tested positive in the first possible resurgence of the disease since the outbreak in 2013. According to medical authorities, the victim fell ill with diarrhea, vomiting and bleeding. Some of them contracted the disease after attending a burial in the southeastern region of Zerekore. According to Sakoba Kiata, head of Guinea's health agency, the country was uh, in the midst of an Ebola epidemic situation with a total of seven cases, including three deaths. Of the seven, four were men and three were noted to be women. Three were isolated, one in uh, Guinea Conakry and two in Zerekore. Between 2013 and 2016, more than 11,000 people died in the West African Ebola epidemic, uh, which began in Guinea. The World Health Organization Africa Director Dr. Machidiso Moiti stated in a tweet that she was very concerned and is ramping up readiness and response efforts for Guinea. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for staying tuned. Remember, up next is uh, the French edition of the newscast, that's Le Journal de Ventes. Stay tuned and until tomorrow, have a blessed evening.